In the earlier video, we saw some examples on measures of central tendency. In this video, we will understand the concept of variability and dispersion with an illustration to provide you a practical feel. Coming up in a moment. Hello, I'm Shreesh and you're watching Learning Puri, a channel for applied learning. Here, I share with you tips and tutorials on data science, business management, marketing, and personal development. Let's get on by understanding variability in statistics. When we want to measure or study the spread of the data or understand how much dispersed the data is or how much focused or concentrated the data is, we will be measuring variability or the dispersion. Let's look at the monthly sales figures for two sales teams in a company for five months. On preliminary observation, we see that the mean and median of both the teams is the same, which is 75. We have defined a range in the previous video and so range of team 1 is 40 and range of team 2 is 4, which is one tenth of that of the first team. However, the range considers only the extreme values of the data. In a comparative context, taking a difference between the sales figures, we see that if in a month one team excels, then in a subsequent month, the other team excels equally. So we can't get a good feel of the performance. Now, to compare both teams on performance, we need to use something else since mean or median does not yield useful information. Further, range only provides us an understanding of extreme values. Here, we introduce the concept of variance in, denoted by S squared, which is the average of the squared distance from the mean of the data. The formula for sample variance uses all the figures in the data unlike range. Let's look at our data once again. Note that the denominator for sample variance is 4, which is one observation less from the total observations that is 5. The concept for population variance is similar except that the denominator is divided by the total number of observations. Why this is so is a topic for another video. Next, we will define the standard deviation that is the square root of the variance or simply s. There is one more concept that uses range in its calculation. This is the IQR or the interquartile range. In calculating median, we identified the data value above and below which 50% of the data lies. For IQR, we will arrange the data in an ascending order and then we will identify the data value above which 25% of the values lie and call it the first quartile denoted as Q1. Then we will identify the data value above which 75% of the values lie and call it the third quartile denoted as Q3. IQR is simply the difference between Q3 and Q1 calculated like so. Let's make some more observations on these figures. Variance of team 1 is 100 times more than that of team 2. So obviously the standard deviation of team 1 is 10 times more than team 2. IQR for team 1 is 10 times that of team 2. These three measures themselves tell you how sales figures of team 1 are spread out in comparison with team 2. In other words, they will tell you how much close to the average was their performance. It indicates on an average the consistency in performance of Team 1 versus Team 2. So we see that Team 1 is less consistent in performance compared with Team 2. Therefore, range, variance, standard deviation and IQR are called the measures of variability or measures of dispersion. They are used when we want to find out how close-knit the data is around the mean. These measures can also be used in comparing performance of machines when we are comparing the number of defective products produced by one machine over the other. Or in telecom networks, we can compare the number of call drops in zone 1 versus the other zone or one telecom provider versus the other. We can also use it for quantitative investigation of plan versus actual behavior in finance. We can only limit the application by our ability of imagination. Before we conclude, we will get introduced to two more concepts. The first is mean absolute deviation or MAD, which is the mean of absolute deviations of the observations from their respective means. Here, we take the absolute figure of the deviations from the mean. We do this by ignoring the sign of the numerical value before we take their summation so that they do not add up to zero. Second, finally, we will be introducing the concept of coefficient of variation or COV. COV indicates the extent of variability in relation to the mean. This is simply the standard deviation divided by the mean. Taking the percentage gives us the percentage value. These are calculated like so for our two sales teams data. You can do the math with the figures and verify as an exercise. 
These last two measures simply corroborate the findings of the four measures of variability that is range, variance, standard deviation and IQR. The two measures are used less often but still worth paying attention to. So this is all about the measures of variability. In the next couple of videos, we will see how these measures of central tendency and variability are calculated using R. I would recommend that you have R or R Studio installed and running on your PC and laptops before that session. We will be playing around with these measures in R, so do not forget to watch these videos. Till then, give a thumbs up, like this video and share it with your friends. Click the subscribe button and do not forget to click the notification bell to get notified of more such videos from me. And as usual, stay healthy, stay peaceful.